Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a video. This time it is on P1, conservation and dissipation of energy. This is the first topic in the physics syllabus uh, and it's quite a long topic as well. Um, your, your teacher's probably spent about 10, 11 lessons on this topic of energy. Um, remember, if you do like this video, please drop it a like and remember that in the playlist of physics is all uh, of the GCSE topics so please remember to watch all the videos and they will help you with your GCSE exams. Starts uh, looking at all the different energy stores that you might be asked about in your GCSE syllabus. Uh, so I wrote down the nine energy stores that I think could come up. When you leave the ground or gain height, uh, that you're gaining gravitational energy. And elastic energy, when you stretch something, uh, think of like a spring. Electrostatic is the repulsion um, or attraction of particles. Uh, you have chemical energy, uh, that could be a, lot, a wide variety of things. It could be batteries, you could have food as a chemical energy because we use that energy from food to convert into other types of energy. Uh, thermal energy is the same as heat energy. Sound is given out by anything that we can hear. Um, we have nuclear energy, uh, which is uh, given out by radioactive um, objects. And we have light energy, which is a type of electromagnetic energy. Now, why it's important to know about these type of types of energy stores is because of the fact that these can interchange with one another. When these energies uh, interchange with one another, it's important to remember that energy is always conserved uh, because energy can't be created or destroyed. It can just be change form. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at some systems, um, some closed systems which uh, energy changes form in. Uh, so here is a swing set, uh, and let's look at the changes of energy going on when you go on the swing. So when you swing uh, and you go back, you gain gravitational potential energy. You gain gravitational potential energy as you get higher, and then that energy is converted to kinetic. Now, if it was all converted to kinetic, then you would end up uh, going fast and then it would all get converted back to gravitational and you'd end up exactly the same height. But what you might notice is when you go on a swing, you never actually reach the same height unless you put in more force. You actually start to slow down unless you start putting in more force. Uh, and that's due to friction, okay? So, and friction gives out heat thermal energy. Heat or thermal energy as well um, and sometimes you can actually hear a swing so you could say that there was a little bit of sound in there as well but if you were to add up the kinetic and thermal energy that would equal the gravitational energy that went in due to the conservation of energy over here we're looking at an ipod uh, and with an ipod um, you, ha you have a few changes of energy going on ipods usually contain a battery which is chemical energy uh, and that chemical energy is converted to sound, which you hear out. Also, because it's got a screen, it's giving out light. And if you leave an iP uh, iPod on for too long, it also gets quite hot. And the last uh, object we're going to look at, the change in energy stores, is a kettle. Um, now, we're going to assume that this is an electric kettle. I'll just draw a a little wire on there. It's, we're going to assume it's an electric kettle and it's been plugged into mains electricity, 230 volts, um, and therefore electrical energy is being supplied to your kettle and that is being converted into heat 
and sometimes you hear the kettle when it is boiling as well. A good way to represent um, energy changes uh, is to use a Sankey diagram, uh, which is what's shown here. Now, this is uh, the Sankey diagram for a phone, which converts chemical energy into sound and light, which is our two useful energies. And there is some wasted heat as well. Now, if I was to look at this, um, now Sankey diagrams quantitatively uh, represent uh, energy changes. That means they represent it with numbers. So if I show that there's a hundred joules of energy, electrical energy going out, and there is 60 joules here coming out as um, sound and light, which is useful, we know that the amount of wasted energy must be 40 joules as they must equal that 100 going in. Now for Sankey, the size of the arrows uh, will represent how much uh, energy is coming out or uh, being used or wasted. Okay, so you can use graph paper to show that. Um, now from a Sankey diagram, you can also calculate the efficiency of an appliance. Um, to calculate the efficiency, what you need to do is you need to do the useful energy divided by the total energy of the system. So, in this example, it would be 60 joules divided by 100 joules, which would give me an efficiency of 0 0.6. And you can turn that in percent into a percentage if you would like, or you could leave it like that. To turn it into a percent, all you'd have to do is times it by 100% which would equal 60%. Uh, so as you can see, this is uh, not that efficient of a mobile phone if it's only producing 60% uh, useful energy, 40% is wasted. Now you've probably heard the term of um, energy efficient light bulbs uh, being thrown around all the time. And basically just an energy efficient light bulb means uh, a, a light bulb that gives out more light energy than heat energy that's wasted. When a force causes an object to be moved, when a force is applied to that object, um, we can say that work has been done uh, to make that object move. Energy is being transferred from one form to another. And to measure uh, the amount of energy being transferred, you do the force times by the distance, you might notice that I've used a calculation triangle here. And this might be the first time you've used a calculation triangle before. So I'm going to show you how it kind of works. Uh, what you need to do is you need to look at the parameter you're trying to work out. And if you want to work out work done, for example, you cover up work done with your hand or you can scribble it out. And you can see when I scribble it out, that work done is equal to force times distance. However, if I was wanting to calculate distance, what I'd do with that is I'd cover it up with my hand or scribble it out. And now you can see that distance equals work done divided by force. And work done equaled force times distance. And then the last one that you will have to work out is uh, force. And that equals work done divided by distance. So hopefully you kind of uh, know how to uh, use one of them calculation triangles, very useful skill. Uh, we'll just look over here to a question now uh, for calculating work done. And there's a couple of little tricks that I've put in there. Um, you might have noticed that I've used 40 centimeters, okay? And uh, you need to remember that the metric unit for uh, distance is meters. So you need to convert that into meters. And if you see a question like this, you always must convert distances into meters if you want to cal calculate uh, a work done. Um, so the force is 7 newtons, and that would be times 0 0.4 meters. And that will give me an answer of 2.8 joules. Now, you see the unit of joules being used for energy because uh, for work done because it is the same as energy transferred. We're going to look at uh, gravitational potential energy now, and uh, we're going to look at how to calculate gravitational potential energy to be specific. 
uh, we're going to use the calculation triangle again, which has GP on top, then we have mass, gravity, and height on the bottom. Mass is measured in kilograms, uh, gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram, and height is measured in meters, and gravitational potential energy, like all energies, is measured in joules. Now we're going to do exactly what we did last time and uh, go through how to calculate each one of the parameters. So GPE, the way to work out it is uh, put your hand over it or scribble it out and you can see that GPE is equal to MGH, mass times gravity times height. But if we don't want to calculate GPE, we could calculate uh, mass and we could scribble out mass and that would equal GPE divided by G times H. Or, or you could do working out uh, gravity, say you went to a different planet, and you could do GP divided by M times H, or you could work out H, the height gained, by doing GPE divided by mass times gravity. Now what's important to remember with gravitational potential energy is that only the vertical height that something moves. So if you're working out the amount of gravitational potential energy, only look at the vertical height gain. Don't look at the total uh, distance something's moved. Sometimes they try and trick you uh, with this, but it's just the vertical height something has gained. To work out the amount of movement energy or kinetic energy that something has gained, uh, you need to use the equation of EK, uh, which stands for kinetic energy, equals half mass times velocity squared. Now, this is probably the hardest one to work out on your calculator and the hardest one to rearrange. Now, looking at the units for kinetic energy, because it's an energy, it's always measured in joules. The mass is measured in kilograms and the velocity is measured in meters per second. Now, uh, when using the calculation triangle, working out EK is the easiest uh, as EK will just equal half mv squared. However, it gets more difficult when we start to try and read. Now, the value of half is never going to change, so I don't ever have to work that out. However, you might be asked to work out the mass of uh, something. And uh, to work out that, you do the same thing. You cover it up with your hand or scribble it out, and the mass will equal EK divided by half V squared. And finally, uh, you might be asked to calculate the velocity. So like with the others, we're going to scribble it out. And you can get uh, v squared equals ek divided by half m. Now it probably won't ever ask you to calculate v squared so you need to get a calculate v so v equals ek and to undo a squared you have to square root everything so it's half m and all of that is under a square root sign. Now the reason why there's two triangles here is because Kinetic energy is very similar uh, to elastic potential energy uh, in the fact that it has almost the same type of equation. Um, we represent elastic potential uh, by E, E, like that, and that equals half Kx squared. And you can see now how it's uh, so similar uh, with K equaling spring constant which is measured in newtons per meter and x is extension which is measured in meters and elastic potential energy obviously measured in joules and i'll show you the rearrangements for that it's very similar to elastic uh, to kinetic energy just like with uh, the kinetic energy equation the only one you're going to uh, struggle with maybe is the extension uh, where extension equals the elastic potential energy divided by half k all uh, square rooted. Now I would definitely practice uh, with your calculator as some of these examples, uh, try them out. I'm going to create a video with some worked examples uh, for these questions. The power of an appliance is how much energy it transfers per second and this is measured in the unit of watts. From its description you should have uh, some good idea of how the calculation triangle will look uh, the amount of energy 
transferred per second. So that's going to be time on the bottom. Energy transferred divided by time will give me the power. Now, just like uh, with the other examples, we are going to go through the calculation triangle. So power, if I cover that up, that will equal energy transferred divided by time. Time will equal energy transferred divided by power. And find energy transferred equals power times time. And we should have got the units down to a T by now. Time is measured in seconds. Power, like I said, was measured in watts. And energy transferred, because it's an energy, like all energies, are measured in joules. The only other thing to do with power is sometimes it will get you to calculate efficiency from power, uh, but it's not a trick. It is still useful uh, divided by total, but just now it's power, useful power divided by total power. Thank you for watching uh, this screencast on energy.